beginning to preach a sermon regarding Calvinism. Calvinism is a really, it's a really dangerous, wicked, do it's not even just one doctrine, it's this whole kind of way of interpreting scriptures. I mean, it, it's, a, it's not just one little thing. It's like, it, it, it's, it's a big package deal. And uh, of course, Calvinism is named after John Calvin. And um, oftentimes when you get into this subject, the, <laughs> as with many false doctrines, if you try to listen to someone who believes in Calvinism, it sounds very confusing. There's some things that they'll say that sound, okay, yeah, I think I agree with that. That sounds right. But then as you keep going, it, 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 the, the, the waters get muddied. And things just don't seem very clear. And just on a broad scale, when you hear, when you hear doctrine, you're listening to preaching, and it just sounds really confusing, it's probably false. It's probably not right. Because the doctrines in Scripture, by and large, are very simple to understand, especially key doctrines. I mean, we're talking about salvation. We're talking about things that are just, I mean, milk of the word, bread and butter. But what Calvinism does, they come in and they, they make the simple things of God extremely complicated. And they muddy it and, and, and they do all of this manipulation and they try to enforce their logic and understanding on things, oftentimes which just isn't in Scripture at all. And they're trying to make things fit together into a certain view. Now, because of the nature of Calvinism, I have, I have a tendency to find a lot of sermons boring on Calvinism because <laughs> the doctrine is just... It's kind of hard to follow even their way of thinking. And I don't really like leading people down that path of, of thinking the way that they do about this stuff because it kind of can, can just mess with your understanding of scriptures in general when you're just hearing too much false doctrine. Then, and, and oftentimes it'll be on passages that may be a little bit harder to understand. And you start thinking along those paths, and, and it really can just mess you up. So, but I'm glad that, that Brother Mark preached that sermon yesterday, though, because he made a point that I don't think I've ever made in any of the sermons that I've ever preached on Calvinism. And it's a very simple point, and it's something that I think completely destroys the whole foundation of Calvinism and the Calvinistic doctrine and it's actually one that's very simple to make. So before I get into that point, and I'm going to spend the whole sermon just on that one point, Calvinism is a, is a doctrine. They, they use an acronym. They use the word TULIP as, to kind of define the five core principles that, that make up Calvinism. So each letter of the word means something. So T means total depravity of man. U means unconditional election l means limited atonement i means irresistible grace and p means perseverance of the saints so these are the five core tenets of their doctrine so total depravity means that man is totally depraved right as a sinner from birth because adam sinned the moment you're born you are just completely, 100%, totally depraved, incapable of doing anything good at all. And the only way that a person can get saved is if God actually gives you the ability and the grace to believe on him. So what they'll say, and this is the, this is the subject that I'm really going to be hitting on this evening, because it, it completely destroys, like, like it, it doesn't make any sense and it flies in the face of Scripture. But what they're saying is that, you know, we, here we believe that man has a will, a free will to be able to decide what we believe. And that even though we may be a sinner, we don't have 
a regenerated spirit within us, we can still hear the gospel. The gospel has power to convince us that it's true and that it's right. But we ultimately make that choice of putting our faith in the gospel. Now, Calvinism teaches that they have a problem with us saying that because they'll say, well, you can't do any good thing on your own and believing the gospel is a good thing. That you just, you just don't have the ability to even put your faith on that, that you could only do that if God gives you that ability. And this comes from them putting too much logic and, and, and not just too much logic. Logic isn't a bad thing. You know, I want to you know, I, I be careful not to just throw around like logic as if, as if logic itself is bad. Logic becomes bad, though, when you have false premises, when you have false beginnings and false story points or, or when you're using bad logic, right? Logic that doesn't make sense. You know, making uh, points, you know, from point A to point B that just perfectly makes sense and using logic appropriately, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But they use, it's kind of like man-made wisdom on top of God's word and make some presuppositions and some assumptions into God's word. And they, and they, they take some, some verses farther than they ought to be applied. Okay. And I know I'm speaking kind of in general terms, but I really want to dig into this one point. I don't want to get into all of, of Calvinism, but this total depravity thing is, is a key element to their doctrine. And it basically is stating that with, you know, you are incapable of even believing on Jesus Christ. God has to give you the gift of being able to do that. And since God chooses who is saved and who isn't, he gives certain people that ability and certain people not. And the I, remember the I and tulip is irresistible grace. And what that means is that once a person is given the grace to believe, they're being called, they will believe just automatically. Everybody who God chooses receive this ability to believe the gospel. And as soon as then they hear it, once they've been given that ability, they, they automatically will just believe it because it's irresistible. Here's what means you cannot resist God's grace.